Wow. <sighs> what happened? What do you mm -hmm. think? Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? The facial nerve exits through the stylomastoid foramen and branches off into five major branches in the parotid gland. The temporal branch, the zygomatic branch, the buccal branch, the mandibular branch, and the cervical branch. The masseter is the most superficial muscle of mastication. It's thick, flat, and powerful, and it elevates the mandible. The temporalis, a large, fan-shaped muscle, is deep to the masseter. Its anterior fibers elevate the mandible, and its posterior fibers retract the jaw. As we see here, if we dissect the masseter, medial to the masseter are the two pterygoid muscles, the medial pterygoid and the lateral pterygoid. You can also see the insertion of the temporalis muscle. Let's quickly review the suprahyoid muscles, all of which serve to depress the jaw and allow it to open. Here we see the masseter. At the top is the tendon which attaches it to the zygomatic process of the maxilla as well as the inferior and deep surface of the zygomatic arch. It runs down and inserts on the external surface of the angle and ramus of the mandible as well as the coronoid process. So here we have the stylomandibular ligament which separates the infratemporal region from the parotid region. It inserts onto the angle of the mandible and originates on the styloid process, which appears to be broken off. That's weird. So now we are looking at the mylohyoid, and we see the anterior and median fibers attaching to the midline raphe, which runs down. The midline raphe is white in color, and runs from the mandible to the hyoid. The posterior fibers of the mylohyoid attach directly on the anterior body of the hyoid bone. In behind the mylohyoid and the anterior belly of the digastric, we see fibers of the geniohyoid running down here like that. What is that? The parotid gland is the largest of the salivary glands. It is found wrapped around the mandibular ramus and secretes saliva into the oral cavity to facilitate mastication and swallowing and to begin the digestion of starches. The temporalis muscle seen here originates at the frontal bone, temporal bone, and parietal bone. It then comes down and inserts onto the medial surface of the coronoid process. We see here that half of the temporalis muscle has been dissected. We're dissecting small strands off at a time and we're going to have to dissect the rest of this. This is the medial pterygoid. Mm -hmm. It's going to run up in that direction. Originating here, or possibly inserting. And all of these form the mylohyoid. And it is inserting on the Marlowe hybrid line. 
Here we have the geniohyoid, which will be running back to the hyoid like that. This is the temporomandibular ligament, and it's attached onto the condyle of the mandible here. Sphenomandibular ligament coming up here from the sphenoid bone down to the inside of the mandible. The mylohyoid originates along the entire length of the mylohyoid line of the mandible. The posterior fiber, seen here, insert into the body of the hyoid bone. The middle and anterior fibers insert onto the median raphe between the muscles of the two sides. The geniohyoid. It is originating on the inferior mental spine of the inner surface of the mental symphysis. And prior to dissection, it inserted on the anterior surface of the body of the hyoid bone. So this is the lateral pterygoid muscle. And prior to dissection, it originated on the greater wing of the sphenoid and the lateral pterygoid plate of the sphenoid. And here we see it inserting on the condyle of the mandible. This is the medial pterygoid inserting at the medial surface of the angle of the mandible and the ramus. So here we have the sphenomandibular ligament and it runs from the lingula of the mandible to the spine of the sphenoid bone. Then we have the stylomandibular ligament which runs from the condyle to the zygomatic bone. So this is the external portion of the mandible. So here we have the mental symphysis. Here you can see that we have the mental foramen. Here we have the ramus, the body. The dental alveoli are embedded beneath the alveolar margin. Here we have the condyle and the coronoid process. Here's the mandibular angle, the oblique line. In between the condyle and the coronoid process is the mandibular notch. Then we have three molars, two premolars and a canine. This is the internal portion of the mandible. Here we have the mandibular foramen. Yeah. This is where the mental spines are. So here we have the hyoid bone. At the front here is the corpus. Here we have the lesser cornu. Up top here is the greater cornu. It looks like my fingers were hiding a small hairline fracture. And actually the entire hyoid bone has been fractured in half. Could this mean strangulation? Oh, yeah. So now that all the muscles are off, we can see here the squamous portion of the temporal bone. You see the zygomatic process. We can see a little fracture on the zygomatic process. So here's the mandibular fossa. Here we're seeing the tympanic portion, and the styloid process should be here. We see the greater wing of the sphenoid, the zygomatic bone. There. Maxilla bone, front. Oh, we can see a little fracture. Actually, a large fracture right there. Interesting. Here's the infraorbital foramen right here. It's the the alveolar margin. So here's the frontal process. The zygomatic process is here. Anterior nasal spine. Here's the nasal bone right there. See some incisors there. Fractured here, here, and here? What do you think happened here, intern? Well, call me crazy, but this muscle looks like it's been super glued on. <laughs>